Hi guys, my name is Sophia and today I'm going to be showing you how to create a block print um, from start to finish. I hope you enjoy. Okay, so the materials you're going to need for printmaking today um, are your printing block. So there's a bunch of different types of printing blocks to use. Um, this Speedy Car from Blick um, is super easy. It's pretty much just like a chunk of rubber, so it carves out really nice and easily. Um, you can also use a linoleum block. It's a little tougher to carve into, um, and it's a more traditional way of printmaking. Um, or you can also use a wood block. Um, that's an ancient um, Japanese technique. Um, there's so many different things to carve into, um, but today, I'm going to be using this Speedy Carve rubber block. You will also need printing ink. Um, I recommend using water soluble so that it's easy to clean up. The oil based um, takes another certain type of um, solution to clean up. Uh, I'm just using black. A palette knife is super useful, um, not necessary. You can just use like a plastic knife or something. You'll need your brayer. This is to roll out the ink and apply it to your um, uh, printing block. And you'll need your carving tools. So this has multiple different tools in it. Um, and they're all kind of different, but this one you just attach the head um, in the top here and screw it down. Um, and so they all have different shapes and widths to carve into. Um, and lastly, you'll need some paper. Um, so you want to use any sort of heavyweight paper. Um, if you use too thin of paper, it will kind of wrinkle and bubble and um, it just, it won't look nice. Um, so you could use, this is some cardstock or watercolor paper, um, or you can use official printmaking paper like BFK um, or any other sort of heavyweight paper. Um, this is optional using graphite paper so that you can sketch your design and then transfer it onto your block. If you don't have carbon paper, that's totally fine. What you can do is just rub a pencil on the back of a piece of paper, rub it really hard, cover the whole thing with pencil marks, um, and then that's kind of your graphite carbon paper. And then you use that and put the uh, graphite pencil side down on your block your sketch on top and then you go over it and I'll show you how to do that in the next step. So those are the materials you'll need. Um, and you can get a kit. I got this kit with the, uh, the linoleum block, this rubber block, the brayer, the carving tools, the ink, um, and this uh, rolling table. Um, from Blick for about $45 and I will attach the link in the bottom of this video if you're interested. Okay, so to transfer your sketch onto your printing block, you can either use this carbon paper or like I mentioned before, um, you can just take a blank, blank piece of paper um, or on the back of your sketch and just coat it and do this pretty heavily. Um, you want to use a soft lead pencil so this number two pencil is fine or anything softer than that um, so that it will rub off. A too light of pencil um, it won't show up on your printed block. So then with this carbon paper, you can kind of see the difference. There's this lighter side and the darker side. I'm gonna put the darker side down on my printing block, make sure it's covered. And then I'm gonna put my sketch over it and I'm kind of feeling the edges to make sure it lines up evenly. Okay, so I have it nice and even and if you wanna tape it down so it stays, that's fine. I'm just gonna hold it with my hands. And then with a pencil or a pen, you're just gonna lightly go over your entire sketch. 
Another option would be to cut down the size of the carbon paper and your sketch to the exact same size as your block, and that way it's kind of easier to see it line up. Okay, so then I'm just gonna line up my sketch to the edges of the block there, and I'm kind of just feeling around the edge to make sure it's lined up all nicely. And then I'm gonna use a ballpoint pen to outline my sketch. Um, and I'm pressing down pretty firmly um, just so that the carbon can transfer onto the block. And I'm gonna check it periodically to make sure that the drawing is shining through. And then I'm just gonna go over every line of my sketch. So now I'm going to go over my drawing um, once more directly on the block with a ballpoint pen just so it doesn't smear off and that I can see it easier. And then the last step before you start carving, and this step is completely optional, um, is to actually paint the surface of your block with acrylic or watercolor. And the purpose of this is so that you can see where you're carving out a lot easier. So I actually started carving and I realized that I couldn't really see my carved lines very easily. Um, and so I decided to use this trick to see where I was carving out. So you can use any color of acrylic and I just watered it down heavily um, or you can use watercolor um, and then I just let it dry in the sun for a few minutes until it was completely dry. Note my block is unpainted here because I started to carve it before I decided to paint it so this next part is a little bit out of order so don't get confused. Okay so now you're ready to start carving. So the most important thing to remember is that anything that you carve out is going to be white um, and anything that you don't carve out and leave will be, in my case, black or whatever color ink you're going to use. Um, the second most, thing, most important thing to remember is that your image is going to be flipped. It'll be reversed. So you can kind of see it, the back of this. Um, image, that's what it's going to look like. It's going to be the opposite. So if you're going to do writing or like your initials or signature or anything, it has to be backwards. So what I did is I wrote my initials in the corner here and then I kind of held it up to the light and I could see it through the paper and I redid it, my initials, backwards. Then I'm going to take my carbon paper I'm gonna do those initials right down here in the corner. Didn't quite show up, so I'm gonna do it again. feels really weird to write backwards. Okay, and then I'm gonna start with the very finest tip uh, carving tool that I have. So it's really, really little, and that way I can get in all the details and do all the little um, outlines first. So just for comparison, this is how it looked when I was trying to carve it. Um, before I painted it. As you can see, it's kind of hard to see. So as you can see, it's much easier to tell what's going on um, and what parts I've carved after I painted it, so I definitely suggest doing that step. 
Um, so really, really take your time with the carving process. This is the most important part um, because this is what your image will look like. Um, and also, if you mess up and you carve a part that you don't want, it's impossible to go back. Um, so another reason to really take your time. Also, a really cool thing about these blocks um, is that you can carve on both sides. So I would recommend practicing some carving on the back side before you start carving your image. Um, and definitely practice doing some curves because curves and turns are probably the, the hardest to get down. But also just make sure that you're not carving too deep um, so that you don't carve all the way through the block, especially if you're going to be carving on the back side as well so that you don't create a hole in the middle of it. Another really useful tip to carving um, is to rotate your block around um, like you see me doing in here so that you're always carving away from yourself. Okay, so now it's time to start printing. Um, so before you get your ink out um, or any other printing materials, you're definitely gonna wanna cover the table with newspaper because it gets pretty messy. Um, and then you're also gonna want to have your paper ready and prepared. Prepared means to tear it down or cut it down to the appropriate size. Um, I'm gonna tear it down because that's um, the official way to uh, measure out print, printing paper. So how I tear paper, I measure it out first. I know that um, this will fit perfectly and I'm actually gonna make it into a card like this. So I'm gonna fold down and form a really nice crease. where I want to tear it, open it up, fold it the other way. And I like to use like something hard to press down on the crease so that it's a really strong, clean crease. Then I'm gonna take a ruler. I'm gonna push it right into that crease. I'm gonna hold down the ruler really firmly I'm gonna take the top right corner of the paper and I'm just gonna tear it right down like that. And that way you get this really nice uh, natural looking torn edges. Um, if you don't want to do that, of course you can just take some scissors and cut out the shape that you want. Um, however, if you're gonna use the scissors, also make sure to use a ruler and a pencil and mark the line first so you have clean edges and corners. So once you have your paper ready, you're also gonna want to get something called proofing paper. Um, I just got a few sheets of printer paper, um, just any kind of really thin, inexpensive paper so that you can test if you like the image um, before you start printing on your good paper. Um, so pretty much I'm going to roll out the ink and I'm going to test it on this and if there's any kind of flaws or anything that I want to add, um, then I can before I use a good sheet of paper. Okay, so now I have my torn paper. Um, I chose to do cards. You don't have to do that. So now to set up your workstation, like I said, definitely put newspaper down um, and then you're going to want um, sort of four different areas and the first area is your rolling station um, so somewhere you can lay out the ink and roll it onto the brayer um, so I'm using this handy little tool it came with the kit that I bought um, and it's nice because it has a ledge so um, it won't scooch, scooch on the table um, but you can really just use any sort of um, flat glass or plastic or metal that you can find in your house. Then the second station you're going to want um, is rolling it on to the block itself. Um, and then the third station you're going to want um, is where you're going to actually print the block onto the paper. And then the fourth station is where your clean paper pile should go. So I have it off to the side here. You can't see it on the camera. 
And that way you're really organized and you keep things tidy and clean. Um, so again, that's your rolling station, uh, your roll up on your block station, your printing station, and your clean paper station. Another thing, another thing that's really useful to have um, is a cloth or paper towel so you can clean your fingers off because they might get dirty. Okay, so I'm gonna take my ink and I'm just gonna squeeze a small line out. You don't need that much ink. I'm gonna take my brayer, make sure it's clean, um, and then just start rolling the ink out. Um, so you wanna pick up the brayer in between each roll because um, that way you'll cover the whole brayer. If you just go back and forth, you'll only get a small portion of the brayer. Um, also make sure not to overload the brayer with ink because then it will fill in all of these nice little crevices in your uh, block. Um, so you should kind of get this like tacky Velcro sound almost. See if you can hear it. Okay. Make sure the brayer is nice and evenly coated. Now I'm gonna go to my block. And in one swift motion, I'm gonna cover it, okay? Okay, and you're just gonna keep covering that nicely and gently until you don't see any of the pink spots left. Okay. So that looks pretty good. Um, never put your brayer with the ink side down. I always leave it ink side up so that it doesn't get messy and it doesn't damage the brayer. So now carefully picking up your block, make sure not to touch the surface. I'm just gonna touch the edges here. I'm just gonna place it down where I want it. Boom, and then once it's down, it cannot be moved or else your image will be completely smudged. I'm gonna take another piece of paper, put it on top of it, and just press down nicely. Make sure to get all the way into the corners. Okay, and then we can kind of lift up the corner and check it. Looks good, I'm gonna peel it. Okay, so I'm gonna roll out a little bit more ink. Make sure your fingers are clean in between each print. And then I did a, a couple more uh, test prints to see how I liked it. I like it okay. Um, if you don't like it, you can wash off your uh, block with just with running water, let it dry, and then keep carving until you get your desired outcome. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and start printing it. So I got my paper ready. Gonna roll up the brayer again. making sure to pick it up in between each roll. And just roll it until you get like a nice tacky sound. Um, Again, make sure not to overroll the ink onto the block. So now there's two different ways to actually print it. Um, you can pick up the block itself and put it face down and rub it, or you can move the block away from your rolling zone. And put the paper on top of it and roll it out. Um, it's up to you what you find works best. I like 
to put the paper down first and then put the block on top of it because that way I can line it up in the center better. Um, another thing you might want to do um, before you start printing is to either trace out um, the block or just mark the little corners of where you want the block to line up. Um, I'm just gonna kind of wing it and eyeball the center because I have a lot of practice and they come out fairly centered without measuring it. And place it down. Again, as soon as it touches the paper, do not move it. And I'm kind of just using like this part of my hand and making a fist. You can also use your palm if you want. Um, and I'm just applying not too much pressure because I don't want the ink to seep into the cracks. Just a nice light pressure and I'm going in circular motions around the whole piece, making sure to get the corners. Um, and I'm also holding down the paper and the block so that it doesn't move and smudge your image. So that should be good. So now you can just peek at the corner, lift up the corner a tiny bit, see if it looks good. Looks like it needs a little bit more pressure. So I'm gonna put the paper back on and keep doing this. Okay, let's check it again. That looks better. So then I'm just gonna peel it off. And there you go. Have a nice little card. And then just repeat this process for however many prints you want. The more the merrier. So then uh, put them aside to dry. I put some newspaper down in my living room corner so that they wouldn't get bumped. Um, but they don't take too long to dry, um, about a couple hours. Okay, so now for cleanup, um, or if you want to change the color of ink, it's gonna be the same process. Um, so I'm gonna do a couple ghost prints just to get all of this extra ink off. So I'm just using my proof paper scrap paper doing the same process rubbing it off that's what happens if you have thin paper wrinkles like that so then I'm just gonna do another ghost print right next to it and this just makes it easier to wash off later okay so now I'm gonna take uh, my brayer my rolling pin um, pad and my plaque to the sink and just wash it off with water because I have water soluble ink. Um, and then if you are gonna do another print in a different color, just make sure everything is thoroughly dry in between colors. 
I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it useful and that it inspires you to start printmaking. Um, it's really an amazing skill to learn um, and a great way to make multiples and sell your artwork. Um, so thank you for watching. Subscribe and like for more videos. Have a wonderful day.